Peace, all. What I'm going to do today, more or less, is talk about the Bagua I Ching connection. Bagua Zong, the martial art in the I Ching. <clears throat> now, to begin with, we have to understand that initially in the beginning, Deng Ai Chan named his art Zhuan Zong, rotating or turning palm. Right? Bagua Zong is something that was of a later development. Now, I'm going to read an excerpt out of my book. And basically, we're going to break this down like this. If Dong Ai Chan based his art on Yi Jing and he taught in the place of the educating, educated, wouldn't you think that someone kept notes? Yeah, well, of course. All right. First of all, you have to understand that Zheng Zheng San was the first to write on Dong's art. Zheng was a Manchurian scholar that reached the second highest level in the imperial examinations. He worked in the palace of Su and learned Bagua from Yin Fu. During his time with Yin, Yin took him to see Deng Hachan on many occasions and discussed the principles of his art. After the fall of the Qing dynasty, he was out of a job, had time to kill, so he, so he is responsible for writing the songs of Bagua, the 36 songs, 48 annotations. All right? Zheng used the theory of the Yi Jing to explain the martial art of Bagua Zong. But please note, Again, not Zhuang, not, not Bai Wa Zhong, but Zhuang Zhong, rotating palm. Please note that Zhang says in his book that Dong did not relate his art to the Yi Jing until later in life, which makes sense in terms of his students that learned because he began this thread of thinking as far as they were taught and would eventually teach. It has also been claimed that Dong Hai Chan taught eight mother palms that correlated to the Yi Jing. Look, prior to 1885, I doubt anybody outside of Cheng Ting Wan taught eight palms. But we'll come back to Cheng. Now let's look at the core of what Yin Fu taught. It is generally thought that Yin Fu taught as Dong Hai Chan did. In terms of material, Yin Fu had the most. The first thing he taught was Lohan. Overall, Yin Fu's system consisted of a combination of both hard and soft training and Qigong methods. But here's a question though. When did Yin develop his 64 palms, and what or who influenced his ideas? From my perspective, I feel that, that it was Zheng Zheng San. Zheng Zheng San was the catalyst. The three men, meaning Dong, Yin, and Zhang, and began to work on it, and Yin and Zhang completed it after Dong's death. This aspect takes me to one of his top disciples, Cheng Ting Hua. When Dong and Yin were working on Yin 64, I'm sure that Chain was made aware of some of this theory, which makes me think that it's possible that Zhang and Dong may have come up with the first set of eight correlated Bagua Palm concepts. Yin took that and with the permission of Dong created eight methods, each having eight variations, thus 64 palms. Which makes sense because this is nothing else because there is nothing else that refers to the I Ching in that sense. Cheng Ting on the other hand, took the concept and together with his friend and student Ji Feng Xiang, a Chinese astrologer and Yi Jing scholar, created his Nine Palace style. It's clear that Cheng was more enchanted with the Yi Jing than Yin was in the methods that they taught. Also remember, Cheng Tinghua seems to have had the biggest influence in terms of the development of Bagua Yi Jing connections. Being that Yin was so conservative, conservative and Cheng so open, it would make sense that Yi Jing connection had a greater following simply because Cheng taught more people. Also for a very long time, most of the Bagua that people ever saw was from Cheng Tinghua's lineage. It reached such a point that when people saw any of the other lineages, they said it wasn't Bagua. This lends to the Yi Jing connection as well, being that there was really nothing to compare with the Chang style as Yin and the rest were more conservative. 
The next, the next biggest influence on this thought was Sun Lu Tang. In the mid-1890s, after studying with Chang for three years, Chang told him if he wanted to reach the pinnacle, he should go learn the Yi Jing. So he went to Sichuan province and studied with the top priests of that temple. Now, in 1915, when he wrote his first book on Bagua, also, wait, what? Wait. Excuse me, you know, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Because I'm, I'm taking stuff out to make the points that I'm trying to make. Now, if Bagua were derived from the Yi Jing, wouldn't the warrior priest know it? Sun went to learn from them, so how did he end up teaching them something they should have already known? Hmm. Also, let's look at it like this. The record revealed state that Dong Chan was a fighter and made his name because of this. Prince Su wanted him because of this. Everybody that wanted to learn came to him for this reason. Not because he was a priest or a scholar. When it comes to the whole Bagua community of the first and second generation in description of these men, it speaks of their love for martial arts, not their love of the Tao or Yi Jing. Tang Ting Hua sent Sun Lu Tang to study the Yi Jing. If it was part of the system, why didn't he teach it to him himself? Why is it said that before Zhang, Zhang Zing San, there was no Yi Jing thought at all? Why did Cheng Ting Hua start his research after he started teaching Bagua? It makes no sense. Now let's look at the name Bagua itself for a moment. Thus far I've listed what is known and added some of my own thoughts. Now I'll add some abstracts that lend to my stand. Another, another way to look at the question is, look at a few more of Deng Hai Chang's students and what they taught. Two students come to my mind in particular. Neither Fan Ziyong nor Cha Feng Ming, Fu Chen Sung's teacher, taught the eight mother palms or sixty-four palms. For that matter, neither did Fu Chen Sung in the early part of his career. Now, these are part of their curriculum. The eight mother palms were postures held while walking. I submit to you that according to the given history, the emphasis was on the change and thus usage. The change in itself refers to Zuan Zong. Rotating palm, okay? What is, the eight, what is the purpose of the eight mother palms? To build a foundation. However, Dong insisted that those he taught already had a foundation. So why waste time? Also, how long were the palms trained before you really started to learn, started learning theory and principles? At least two to three years. After Shi Ji Dong, who was the third disciple of Dong Hai Chan, there was Cheng Ting Hua. He only learned from Dong at best for five years. The rest got much less, and most of those that have been listed as Dong's students actually learned from Cheng Ting Hua. Also, well-known Xing Yi master and Yi Chan creator, Wang Zheng Chai, who trained with Cheng Ting Hua for three years in his mention of Bagua, spoke of all the crap that had entered into the practice and said that the core training was the single change palm, in which that those, that those supposed to be learning would concentrate on that. The eight mother palms were created to teach and develop those with nothing in the beginning. They were developed to help create connections in the body, build certain alignments. All right. As time went by, some teachers began to reserve the palms as advanced training and taught them later. There is also the stand that the names Eight Mother Palms, the Eight Old Palms, refer to Dong Hai Chan's original teachings. Nah, no way. My research has found that this term began with third generation masters at the Central Martial Arts um, Academy, referring in particular to the first form of Jiang Wang Kao which we know today as the original form. Now, before I continue, I have... Uh, uh, many myths surround the creation of Bagua, 
Deng Haichan himself began this when he said that he learned his art from a Taoist. But he did this simply because it would help people to respect it. He wouldn't be questioned on it. Okay? A few third generation practitioners took this to the next level. Gao Yisheng. Gao Yisheng created the Taoist P. Cheng Sha story. Gao was a student of Cheng Ting Hua and Cho Yu Sheng. He perpetuated the story that he learned his how to in Bagua from a Taoist named Sun Yi Zhen. Most people now believe that he took the essence of Cheng's Bagua and what Cheng and Chao taught him as Bagua applications and borrowed Xing Yi's idea of one technique, repetition on a straight line, and created his 64. Okay, now, continuing on, we're going to look at it like this. I have to understand. In 1865, when Dong Ai Chang came to Beijing, started teaching for the Prince of Su, his name was called, the name of the art was Zuan Zhang. Okay? Rotating palm, turning palm. Alright? The principle of which was literally, you're constantly changing, and it is a known fact that fighters of this system, they were known to generally just about disappear in front, from in front of their opponent, they disappear before their eyes. All right, basically talking about Bagua's footwork and how he moved. All right, it was after the studying and development of the system that it began to be called Bagua or Bagua Zhao. All right. Which again, this began with Cheng Ting Hua. It's with Cheng Ting Hua because Cheng Ting Hua was the biggest teacher in terms of numbers of students and notoriety just in general. Yin Fu, Xi Ji Dong, Ma Gui, who died young. I mean, all of these, I mean, Ma Wei Chi, excuse me, who died young. These individuals, they were conservative. They didn't have a lot of students. So the perpetuation of the system just didn't happen like that, but not in Chang's lineage. All right? As time went on, I'm pretty sure that what happened was they got together. Nah, I'm not going to say that. The lineage holders of the various aspects of Zhuang Zhang, because of the popularity that Cheng Ting Hua's system had, was receiving, these individuals all knew that they, the common teacher was Dong Hai Chan. So ultimately, I mean, it's just common sense. Everybody fell into line with the Bagua name that it would share in its popularity. Okay? Zhuan Zhang is the art that Deng Hai Chang brought. Bagua Zhang is what the name eventually changed to. Deng Hai Chang taught three palms. Three. Alright? The um, single change palm, um, double change palm, and the smooth body palm. Smooth, the smooth body palm is just a single change palm done continuously. Alright. Now it's also said that he did develop a fourth palm which is called the hurricane palm which is noted in Fu Chen Song system. Alright. Fu style Bagua. But the actual mother palms or eight palms were developed by Cheng Ting Hua. Yin Fu doesn't have these in his system. Yin Fu has eight ways or eight techniques within his 60 that come together with his 64 palms. Bagua in the beginning was extremely simple. It did not have a lot of forms. We're looking at extreme, we look at some hot forms now. Yes, there are all kinds of forms developed from the various lineages. But the truth of the matter is. All these, extra, all these extravagant forms did not exist. 
They just did not. Um, the best way to look at that is the fact that what we call mastery of an art today is based on so much. But back in the old days, when I'm saying the old days, I'm talking about turn of the century, 1900, around that time and prior. The techniques were far simpler. Individuals worked on a handful of techniques and perfected them. Thus, mastery was achieved. The time in, and they definitely put the time in. Now, we have extravagant forms. And no one is putting the time in. In particular, on the basics. So no, the level of accomplishment is not going to be that high. But I'm getting off base. Bagua Zong and Bagua, or Bagua Feng Shui, all right, in terms of the book of divination, or Bagua in terms of the energetics. Now, not to say that they don't apply, because the, tribu the attributes of the animals to each one of the quas, um, the energies, and such, each of these are true and real. But applying them in a fight, is deep. Your, your understanding has got to go way beyond the mundane. There's just no way. All right? You focus on the principles of what was taught. Change. Your bridge. Connecting energy. Your alignment. All of these things are what make Bagua Bagua. You cannot use the I Ching to fight. Not at a low level. And even at a high level. A lot of the old masters were like, you want to learn the I Go learn the I I teach Bagua Zong. Bagua, and they looked at it as a martial art that had to be perfected. Each one of us are individuals. The expression of the art is based on that individuality. All right? As my Sifu used to say, he could have two students that both learned for 10 years together. In the end, their Bagua would not look alike. And I get it, because it's based on the individual. All right? Bagua, the forms, are set in order to teach you how to move. Shenfa, you know, you, the body method, how to move. But how you ultimately use that method is based on you. You and only you. For there's only one of you. And where you, I mean, because, all right, let's, let's take it back to the Yi Jing. The Yi Jing is also based um, within astrology. Now, if you look at the astrological aspects of it, you and this next person were born under different aspects of the I Ching within that astrology. The energies that you're going to produce, the way you think, all of these are going to be different. So there's no way that anyone can sit back and say, you're going to do it like this or you're going to do it like that. Just an average person, it's just not going to happen. So, in the end, I'm not discounting the I Ching. But what I am saying is that basing your art on the Yi Jing and saying that you're going to study this energy and use it that way requires a hell of a lot of studying. There's no way, no way that a beginner can begin to use that. These are extremely advanced methods. Hell, in China, they, it is said that you didn't even begin to learn the Yi Jing until after you were 40 years old. Now think about that. After 40 years old, the Yi Jing was not part of the original beginnings of what we now call Bagua Zong. The principles of Zuan Zong, rotating, turning palm, is what was taught. Those that are truly interested in the fighting aspects right now and true applications of what we call Bagua use and work with the principles. The Yi Jing 
Okay, let's let's do it like this. The internal is based and all Tai Chi Xing Yi. All of these are based on energy. You have to first be able to manipulate you have to first come to know the energy before you can begin to manipulate the energy. And then once you've learned how to manipulate the energy, you it's still gonna take a ridiculous amount of time to differentiate the types of energy. And then you're still how they combine. Energy never rests, it never stays still. Wow. It, it, it continues to go. There is no low level way to put it and the truth be told is that I don't even feel words can express it. At least I don't have the words. Alright? Respecting each thing in its place. No the difference between Zuan Zong, Bagua Feng Shui, Bagua, or rather Zuan Zong, Turning Palm, Bagua Zong, Eight Diagram Palm, Bagua Feng Shui, which is geomancy and the placement of the energies. Okay, but originally again, Bagua was a book of divination. You would divine, they would sit up here looking for answers, future, current events. Alright? That was its original use. So, now applying it on an energetic level, in terms of fighting, it is not a basic concept. By no means. No means. Now, unless someone can come up with a simplistic way to teach someone that doesn't even understand energy, how to use the energies of Bagua. It takes years to develop these energies. Years. But, hey, I can go on and on. This is no small thing. I just wanted to make this point, put this out there. Everybody feed in. You know, it's up here, it's on the board. Y'all give up your thoughts, alright? But I can tell you this. After what it was 40 years of doing Bagua, the Yi Jing is not easy. Entering these concepts within Bagua for fighting is no easy task. Basically, for, for no other reason, no two people are alike, and you never know what your opponent is going to be, what they have. All right? That technically puts you on the level of being extremely empathic. And when I say empathic, understand again the energies of an empath is that you can feel this. And not simply empathic, but telepathic because you got to read their mind. It's not, it, it, that's fantasy. All right? That's just straight up fantasy. It's just not going to happen. So, my people. Until the next entry, yo, peace out. This is Mao Shan. Peace.